Religion of power and prosperity. Prosperity. Don't let no one deceive you because it is coming. Yes, it is. Things be happening. <laughs> Glory. We are, and, and you know, I'm going to try and put this in. The Bible tells us that we are in the world, but not of the world. Amen? Now, as the word tells us that we're in the world, but not of the world, because as God has taken us out of the world, even while we're still in it. Now, for a natural person, it's like, man, you're crazy. But by the spirit of the living God, we live in a different reality. And one of the things the enemy likes to do is bring you and take you out of the true reality and into a deceptive reality. There are what we call reality shifts right now. There's all kinds of realities going on. But there's only one true reality. You notice that when you dream, when you sleep, you go into another reality. Man, I'm telling you, you believe you're there. Amen? People that are doing the virtual whatever, uh, AI stuff, they believe they're there. Man, they'd be going around punching the air and everything else. They feel the pain. Oh, yeah. And in this reality shift that we are in right now, that's why there's so much chaotic things going on. There's such a shaking. Because true reality is light. True reality is light and truth, which is the same. Light is truth. So that's why there's a battle over reality. And, and right now, there are so many reality shifts. But the reality shifts of deception, there's only one reality shift of truth. Amen? That stands firm. That's why Jesus came, not to restore reality, but to restore our DNA. That's why you must be born again. But even if you're born again, you can still drift out of the true reality into a deceptive one. Amen? So, we are in a time of multi-reality shifts in the battle to promote and expose false realities. In John chapter 8 and verse 31. That's why it's important to get in a corporate God's presence. Because we can do it so much by ourselves, but you just can't get through that place, man, that you want to, you know? Because you have the assistance of everybody bringing God's presence with them. This is not the house of God. And so the people come that are of God, then it becomes the house of God. Because all the little houses got together. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> it becomes a community. We bring God's presence. In verse 31 in John 8, would you read it with me? Then Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the what? Truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. Boy, were they deceived. They were living a different reality. How can you say you will, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say whoever commits sin is a slave of it. Hmm. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. Because my word 
has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father. Why? Because he was living in another reality. Jesus came from the true reality. And you do not, and you do what you have seen with your father. <laughs> they, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from my God, from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? See, God, Jesus spoke another language because he was from another reality. He was trying to show them that they were not right. This was being kind. Hallelujah. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. Why? Because you're not from my reality. Does everybody understand this? You are of your father, the devil. That's a false reality. He's a promoter of deception. And the desires of your father you want to do, he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth or stand in the light because there is no truth in him or light. When he speaks lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and a father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God, now you got to remember something. He who is of God, the true reality, hears his words. Therefore you do not hear because you are not from my reality. Does everybody understand this? I know I'm putting this in here. It's to bring an understanding. Truth from creator sets you free by obeying and practicing the truth. Amen? The truth from the creator, which is the true reality, not just knowing the truth makes you free, but putting it into practice because you are taking what is from the true reality of God and activating it. So it allows you into that reality. That's the true reality. Amen? So, whoever associates or practices deception or sin walks in bondage and is a slave to it. And it's reality also. Every lie promotes a false perception and a false reality. If you believe it, you enter that reality. Amen? That's why the enemy loves to shift realities on us so that we can never find out the true reality of that moment and wants to move on to another one. That's why you see false flags all over the world. That's why all kinds of things are people are saying this. That's why the Bible tells us there'll be wars or rumors of war. Why? It's trying to bring people into other realities than the true reality. So that all these reality shifts are manifesting, but there's only one true reality. Amen? The purpose the enemy uses multi-realities is to move from one reality to another so nobody stays long enough to figure out or expose its deceptive intent. Everybody got that? I'm telling you, I was, I was on a whole other track today. And it was like the Lord was waiting for me to ask him what he wanted to do. Because I was thinking, you know, yeah, this is good. And all of a sudden, so what do you want to talk about? As I took that moment. So what do you want to talk about? Reality shift. He said the world's going through a reality shift. I thought, whoa. Families are going through a reality shift. Families are breaking up because they refuse to step into true reality and are shifting with false realities. There's multiple shifts of reality going on all over the place. One after another. One after another. 
That's why there's false prophets and all kinds of things going on. Anything to move us out of the true reality. In James chapter 3, and verse 13. Look at what addiction does. Man, does that bring you into a reality that's crazy? People do crazy things. And, and you gotta, in these realities, people actually see themselves in it. See, false hope will bring you into a false reality. Somebody's promising you something, and you set your heart on it. You just entered that reality. You see it. You taste it. You feel it. And when it's not true, it's harmful. It hurts. See, because it isn't light, there's only one true light, and it's God's words. Amen? His presence. His reality. What does the psalmist say? Lead me to your, in your truth and guide me in your light. So that, that is the true reality. In the true reality, in the reality of God, in His reality, when you enter it and follow it, the benefits of God are available. What the enemy tries to do is bring us a reality shift again. Boom, boom, boom. Do you ever self-diagnose yourself? Boy, do you jump from one reality to another. <laughs> you know, why did this happen? How did this happen? <laughs> Multiple realities. You're trying to figure all kinds of stuff out. Here, yeah. James 3.13. Let's speak it, please. Hallelujah. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Hmm. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? It's demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. What's the enemy trying to do? Bring confusion. So what he'll do is a reality shift as much as he can. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Look at that verse. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Every evil thing is accessing that individual because they're stepping out of the true reality. Does everybody get this? See, how many people are, you can get swayed so easily. People are bribed to step out of the true reality. Money will move people out of the reality. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Why? Because it sets them in another reality. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield and submit, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. In other words, no hypocrite. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Now, is a hypocrite walking in a multi-reality? Or fall. Yes, they say one thing and do another. They'll say yes, yes, yes to you, but their heart is not there because they're connected to multi-realities. Because their belief system is split. Multi-split. Amen? Who is wise in understanding the wisdom of God or the wisdom of evil? He says the wisdom of evil is earthly, sensual, and demonic. It promotes their reality. Propaganda through media and visual, and threats of false flags and news and all of these things promote another reality. And many people walk into it. Many people touch and agree with it. How about your past? See, that's why God says, live from the future to the present. 
his future, his reality to the present, then we can't be swayed. It doesn't mean it won't come, but we'll say, no, I ain't going there. Don't, can't, don't touch it. Amen? In Proverbs chapter 9, The first thing about um, overcoming reality shifts is to recognize that they're there. Amen? I mean, if you can't recognize it, or if you're not attentive to it, you'll be easily swayed. Anybody ever been disappointed? <laughs> yeah. Well, you had an expectation, didn't you, that wasn't met. And that expectation brought you into another reality. So that's why the Word tells us not to trust in man, but to trust in God. That means in everything. Everything. And those who trust in God you know, you can trust them. Amen? Proverbs 9, 10. Let's speak it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. We just talked about needing wisdom from above. And the knowledge of the Holy One is what? Understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied. And your years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you bear it alone. Whoa. The fear of the Lord, the beginning of wisdom, reverence, honor, and respect. That's godly wisdom. Amen? So that's what you need to ask for all the time. See, the wisdom of God allows us to see things through. The wisdom of God tells you how or what to do. Amen? Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. But there's got to be a fear of the Lord. Well, how do you get the, the fear of the Lord? There's got to be a relationship. There's got to be a presence. That, the fear of the Lord, the honor and respect is an area of acknowledgement of who He is. Reverence, honor, and respect. You are always acknowledging the Lord. That keeps you in His reality. Amen? Psalm 36. That's why the world doesn't understand your language. How you speak. They don't understand why you do what you do. They don't understand the, the area of the financial also. They don't understand the tithings and offerings and giving and helping and so forth to the kingdom. Verse 1. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgressions or the acts of the wicked. He says there's no fear of God before his eyes. Okay, so here it is. Now think this, think this through a minute. He said there's no fear of God in their eyes. Why? Because sight. See, reality is always visual. What reality you really associate it with, you will see more. Um, that's why we live in a temporary realm. Amen? But even in this temporary realm, there is still a reality of truth. But in this temporary realm, because it's controlled by powers of darkness, because it's perishing, they release multiple realities that shift on us all the time. I mean, you can go on YouTube. Man, let me tell you, everything's a multi-reality on there. There's all kinds of weird things going on there now. And it's amazing how many people have grabbed hold of it and are a part of it now. 
and our anti-true reality. Because there's no light with them. They can't see. Because true reality brings visualization. Verse 2, for it says he flatters himself in his own eyes. Why? Because he lives in a false reality. His eyes are set upon self. When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates, the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed and he sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor what? Evil. No fear of God in his sight. In other words, no fear of God in his reality. Remember now, sight is associated with reality. Amen? No reality. To that individual, no consequences sometimes. Let's go to Proverbs 4, verse 14. Do not enter the path of the wicked. In other words, do not enter their what? Reality. Do not walk with walk in the way of the of evil. Avoid it. How do you avoid something you can't recognize? You don't. You step into it by mistake. That's why we're the Spirit of God tells us all things. That's why the anointing tells us things to come. If you're walking in the Spirit, you'll know. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done what? Evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they, have, they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Wow. But the path of the just is like the shining sun. Two, two realities right there. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness, and they do not know what makes them stumble because they can't see. They live in a false reality. Amen? Light is truth, darkness is deception. Only one true reality, but many false realities. Ephesians 5. Though we live in this world, we're not from this world. Thank God we've been taken out of this reality. But so many people fight to stay in this reality and don't even realize it. That's why Jesus said, deny yourself. Hello. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight, and follow. What's he saying? Cut yourself loose from this reality. That's all these multiple realities here. And stepping into the true reality. Jesus paid the price, ripped the veil, rose again, amen, brought light to the world to establish the true reality. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 5. Did I say that? At least it wasn't Revelation 65 or something. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Let's speak it. For you were once darkness. That means we walked in a false reality. Amen? One of the multiple false realities. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Wow. But now you are light in the Lord. That means you're in a new reality. Amen? Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. If you're not exposing it, you're going to step in it. For it is shameful even to speak of those things that are, which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. 
See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? Evil. The days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk. Why? Because it brings you into another reality. Think of all these uh, narcotics and all of these mind-altering things and all of these psychic, psycho, uh, mental drugs. Brings these individuals into a different reality. Pain medications bring people into a different reality. Why? Because it moves their focus away from the truth. They know the truth, but they can no longer practice it. Does everybody understand this? That's where we're finding many people drift. But be filled with the Spirit of God, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. To the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the what? Fear of God. Oh, how beautiful that is. We are. We once lived in the false reality of darkness, <laughs> sleepwalking in multi-reality shifts. Think about that. To please the flesh. Listen. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life are three different realities. Each one holds its own. Hello? Those three things cause a, uh, 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 can cause a, or promote a reality shift very easily. Ephesians 4, verse 11. He himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? Equipping, for training, for bringing reality. Amen? For conditioning, for preparing, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith. In other words, same reality. And of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ or the anointing, that we should no longer be children tossed from one reality to another. Hello. Tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of Deceitful plotting. Look at that's the enemy trying to bring us from shifting us from multi realities. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth by the body for the edifying of itself in love. No longer tossed to and fro into reality shifts. What you believe, you will follow. What you confess, you will possess. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. All of those will bring a person into a shift uh, and a reality shift. Alienated from the life of God or the true reality, he says. Many still love out, live out of the true time and reality of God Almighty. How about oppression? Woe is me, me. Man, that brings you right out of the reality quickly. Why? When your eyes are on you instead of him, you easily the enemy knows. So he tries to get your attention and distract you so he can cause you a, a, a reality shift. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the what? Prince of the power of the air. Who? The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. They live in another reality. Rebellion is another reality. 
Fear is another reality. And the devil's got all kinds of medications to keep you in them. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Another reality. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath just as the others. Ooh. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved by his plan. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceedingly exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Unseen entities of darkness that hold human hosts in captivities as slaves of darkness that promote the lives and the agendas of powers of darkness in these entities. As they shift realities, hoping not to get caught by the light. They're hoping not to get caught by the light. That's why they must shift quickly. So they're always changing multiple realities. If you've noticed, the political arena right now is with one thing happening and they try to start a war here, they're blaming this person, they're accusing. What's it trying to do? Shifting realities. We call them false flags just to remove things and deceive people. Look at, how, look at what happened when the Twin Towers came down, even though our own government blew them up and killed thousands and thousands of people. What was, why did they do that to open a, dim a dimensional port of darkness? Because the more bloodshed of humanity, the more ports they can open and bring demonic spirits in. People don't understand that area of spiritual warfare. They don't understand the dimensional ports of the powers of darkness and how they access. And remember, the powers of darkness, the rulers like Satan and the fallen angels hate humanity. They hate the blood. And what does the Bible say? The life of the blood in this realm I mean, the life of the flesh or the life of the body in this realm is in the blood. So they love to shed human blood. In fact, Halloween that's coming up. There are more children abducted and more children sacrificed. In fact, they've than ever before. And, and, but they're producing, they're, they're birthing their own children to sacrifice now. Because people are awakened to it. Somebody sees somebody snatch somebody's kids, they go, they go after them and get that kid back. They, you see, you hear testimonies of all the time in the malls and in stores and all kinds of stuff. Somebody grabbing somebody else's kid trying to get away and somebody else saw it and, and rescued that child. So because of some of these things that are happening, they have come to the area to where their occult regimes are now birthing their own children and sacrificing them. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the trickery, or the dimensional shifts. Amen? Of reality. Put on the whole armor of God. You know, you go up to many Christians, you ask them, hey, you know what the armor of God is? What is it? It's <laughs> a matter for you. Hallelujah. They don't know the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. For we do not what? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Unseen entities. Come on, read it with me. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Man, you, when you understand what he's saying here, it's powerful. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand their deception in the evil day and having done all to stand. 
Therefore, put on what? The unseen entities of darkness that hold humans. Amen? Put on the full armor of truth and righteousness and peace and faith, salvation, sword of the Spirit, God's Word, praying in the Spirit, tongues. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where the moth and the rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. In other words, this, this is basically he's talking about your hopes, things that are value to you. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Well, that's God's reality, isn't it? Where neither moth nor rust destroys where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your hope is, where your desires are, there your heart will be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. That means you're walking in deception, false reality. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow. The eye is a reality of light or darkness. Amen? What you follow. Remember, reality is always something that you see. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I mean, when you step back and you see what's going on in our world right now, it's so real. <laughs> it's so real. The, uh, the reality shifts are constantly, that they're always trying to promote everything, constantly. Trying to move us out of the true reality. Trying to compromise it. Or trying to contaminate. In, in First uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, nobody knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So you need to be filled with the Spirit of God and stay filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, which brings false reality. Amen? But the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Why? Because a natural man doesn't get it. Those who live in the world or are part of the world will not get it. Only those who are living in the world but are not part of the world will get it. Does everybody get it? Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and of our Jesus our Lord. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Those keep you in the true reality, don't they? That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For these things are yours and abound. If they are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because 
The knowledge of him keeps you in the reality. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble or be moved out of that reality, out of true reality. For an entrance will be supplied to use abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The promises of truth allow to partake of the divine nature and escape the corruption or multi-reality shifts. I'll say that again. The promises of truth allow us to partake of the divine nature and escape the corruption of multi-reality shifts. The promises of truth allow us to partake of the divine nature and escape the corruption of multi-reality shifts. Psalm 15, verse 1. It says, Lord, who may abide in your table, and who may dwell in your holy hill or in your holy presence? In other words, who may walk in your reality? Who's going to walk in his reality? He who walks uprightly, who works righteousness, who speaks the truth in his own heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil in his sight in his, or to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. Nothing going to change. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor takes a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved out of the true reality. Everybody sees that, correct? 1 Timothy 6, verse 9. You know, think about um, the promotion right now, I'll, especially I know in this country, laborers are few. I mean, it, it, companies are doing whatever they can to hire people. They can't get people enough people to get to hire. Why? Because these people have stepped in a, in a false reality. And they've stepped in this false reality thinking that the government's going to take care of them and they're ending up on the streets because they've been lied to. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the path, or from the reality, and their greediness and, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, men and women of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Why? That will keep you in the true reality, won't it? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you also uh, were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortality do dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power forever and ever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to close it. Psalm 16, verse 7.
I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved out of the true reality. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forever and evermore. If God be for us, who could be against us? Amen. Remember, he's come to bring us life and life abundantly and do far above all we could ever ask or think. But it's got, you, it can't happen unless you're in his reality. Amen. So many people are trying to get the promises of God, but get, getting shifted by multi-realities and not maintaining the course in the true reality. Just know that they're there, they're happening, and you will be tempted. All the time. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word, for who you are, for what you're doing and getting ready to do, and for preparing us that we may recognize any attack of reality shifts. We give you glory, honor, and praise, and we bless your name, bless your people tonight with dreams and visions of true reality in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?